You may be thinking that learning pieces by Chopin is far too difficult, and in a lot of cases, you'd be right. Well, today I'm going to show you the exception to that, because I'm going to show you three Chopin pieces, all happening to be preludes, by the way, that uh, are pretty manageable for most people. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce each prelude. Um, I'm going to go over why it's good, a good choice for a beginner, and then I'm also going to talk about what skills that you're going to get from that prelude, since each one's a little different. But let's get on to the first one. Okay, the first prelude I'm going to go over with you is prelude number four. Now, this one is a great choice for beginners because you have a quite simple left-hand pattern, uh, left-hand chord pattern, and luckily, it doesn't change too much measure to measure, just like a little bit. So you're not going to be jumping your left hand all around. Same thing with your right hand. There's a little bit of movement going on, but really nothing that is too difficult to handle. Um, going into that, the right hand melody, Chopin always has these really nice, you know, long, romantic, whoops, melodies. So it's a really good practice for playing your right hand over your left hand and just getting into that where, without jumping all around the keyboard. The next reason that these are so good for beginners is that there are limited amounts of ornamentations. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, other than the notes in your music, there's a lot more going on, right? Um, there's things like dynamics, how loud and soft you have to play. By the way, also good for beginners in this piece because there's not really a whole lot of changes in the volume, just some simple swells and um, coming back down in certain places. But what I'm really talking about um, in terms of ornaments are tricky things like this turnaround here, the stretto here. So that's something you'd have to look up ahead of time. But the good news is that there's only one of those. Um, at least if I remember right, and the whole piece. So that makes it more manageable. The thing that makes a lot of Chopin pieces, like nocturnes and everything, is that you have so many like little ornaments and things going on that you, if you're not familiar with how to play each one, it's gonna take you a lot of time to get each of those down. Also, um, in this piece, there are no tuplets. Now, what is a tuplet? Well, tuplet, uh, probably the most common form of a tuplet that you know of is a triplet, you know, where you have the three notes, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. That's a tuplet. Now, those are easy, right? But what if you start to get into quintuplets or sextuplets or septuplets or decatuplets or uh, are they called decatuplets? The 10 one, the one with 10. Uh, then you have to figure out how to do those and they take a while. And, and there's actually a lot of trial and error to getting those down. We, we'll have to make a lesson for that, uh, just on that some other day. But a lot of simplicity here, nothing too crazy that you're gonna have to look up. The last thing that makes it really good for beginners is that it's pretty short. So even if you have trouble with it, it's fairly manageable at about one page. Another prelude that's pretty manageable for most people is prelude number six. Now this, you can kind of think of it as a flip around or an inverse of the other one I just taught you about because remember last time I said that your right hand had the melody, left hand had the harmony. Um, now it's switched around where with the left hand, you have the melody there that you're gonna be playing louder than the right hand. So it's great practice for that. That's a bit less common in music, but you will still see it. So it's great to have that practice. It'll also help strengthen out your um, left hand if you are right-handed. Um, let's talk about some more of the other features that make it good for a beginner. Similar to the last one, the right hand chords, luckily don't really change a ton between at each measure. I mean, they change a little bit. In that second line, you have a little bit of a tricky section there. Um, but really, it's fairly simple. The left hand is fairly simple as well. Now, it'll take you some time to get this opening like arpeggio thing down. But as you can see, it's very repetitive. It changes a little bit each time. So you'll have to be careful. But it's basically the same thing. You're just moving in the different positions. 
playing that pattern over and over. So once you get it once, it makes it a lot easier to um, manage. Now in terms of simplicity also, pretty simple in terms of dynamics. There are some areas where you will get a little louder, a little softer, but nothing um, too crazy and it never gets super loud. Probably the biggest challenge will be getting to uh, pianissimo at the very end with that triple P there. You may have to use the soft pedal there. Again with the ornaments, there's not really any ornaments I can see. There's a grace note right here. I think that's considered an ornament, so you'll want to be careful. Make sure you get that in. But again, very limited on that. No tuplets, thank goodness. So you're not going to be fitting six notes into one beat or five notes or something strange like that. And again, this one's very short. So it's about one page, pretty manageable. Even if you have some trouble with it at first, it should be something that will not take you forever to learn. Okay, there's more, but the first thing I want to tell you is that if you're liking this lesson so far, make sure you smash that like button because it lets other people know that this is a quality lesson they can learn from as well. All right, back to the lesson. Prelude number seven is also a great choice for beginners, even though it is a bit more complicated than um, the other ones before. It's only two lines though, which makes it nice and short. So this is why I put this one in here. It's a little bit more complicated but because it being short makes it a lot more manageable. So taking a look through here, what makes it easy is basically that it's short. Other than that, you do have a bit more um, hand movement, but nothing insane, but there's certainly a lot more going on here. But luckily the rhythm is pretty repetitive. The phrases are pretty repetitive. I mean, obviously that's what makes them phrases. So it's really nothing, even though it's a little bit more difficult, it's nothing that will break you. At least I hope not. <laughs> this one's also really good practice for balancing out between each hand. Obviously you have the melody in the right hand again. But, so obviously you're going to play out the right hand louder. However, there's something I want to add into this piece. You see how you have a melody with just one note at a time? But then you have three chords here. You have to be careful because the top note of this chord, this B, is actually part of the melody. So you want to actually be playing that B louder than the rest of that chord. You want to really hear that B stick out there because it's part of the melody. Oops, let me try again. Just like that. So it's going to give you some good practice playing out the melody while also playing chords in the same hand. And you, the way I do it is I just kind of maybe tilt my hand a little bit more heavy towards that top end. It's something that you're going to have to get used to because whenever you play a chord, a lot of times the top notes being played with your pinky, well, guess what the weakest finger in your entire hand is for most people? Uh, I think for almost everybody, is your pinky. So that kind of will, will cause you to really have to practice these and try to balance to get more sound out of that top. And if you need to brush up on your piano skills before you tackle a lot of these Chopin pieces, or you just need to brush it up anyway, you want to check out these lessons I have here on the channel about um, training your two-hand piano playing because that's going to help you out a lot. Check out some of these other lessons on strategies on how to read music really fast. Both of these are really going to help you uh, and especially tackle these pieces. So thank you for coming out, everybody. I'll see you in the next lesson.